Hey, so you probably noticed that I've got a few of these boxes floating around my room and I do have my guitar over there, but I thought I would go through how we could use these for synthesizers. So I thought, let's go through plugging them up, some of the controls we can use and seeing how that applies and changes up the sound. So let's get into it. So to help us demonstrate how to use an amplifier to color sound, I brought over my monologue to create those tones. So we've got a test tone set up, which is and then we'll use that throughout this demonstration so you can hear the sort of differences so you can jump back and forth. And first off is how to actually connect your synth straight to the device. Because what we don't want to do is go straight in there, plug it in, hit a note, because what could happen is we could smoke the preamp in here. Now this Yamaha one actually does do some nice things for us, but if this was like an older style amplifier, what we want to do, turn it off, turn off our synth, plug it in, make sure the gain stage is turned down and our synth is turned down as well, and then make sure the output is down, so no sound signal whatsoever will go through. Turn it back on. I usually go with 12 o'clock to start with, so 12 o'clock gain, and then we slowly bring up the sound of our synth until it's at a nice level. So when you got that, uh, just leave it there. You probably notice that you don't have to add too much volume for the sound to come through, just because of how uh, line level versus instrument level works. So instrument level is a lot lower than line level. So what would happen is if we pumped a line level through a preamplifier, it's going to amplify that signal a stupid amount and probably do some damage. So we don't want to do that. Now, if you haven't seen or used a guitar amp before, I just wanted to start and break down some of the different sections you'll probably see when you start mucking around or seeing one. First off, you probably will see a gain stage or some way to amplify the signal. Now this is really useful because what we can start doing is taking our signal and pushing it to the max and start distorting it in really cool ways. Now on the Yamaha here, we actually got a few different modeling types. So we've got like a clean. And then let's say we pick like a high gain type. So I'm just going to go with British high because I like it. And then if we play that same test tone, we'll notice that it's a whole lot going on that's different here. So if we have start mucking around, we could go. So just, yeah, a whole different breadth of sounds that we can just make with that. So I'm just gonna move back to clean. Next, we have our EQ section. So this allows us to sculpt the sound we want. So say if it tops are too bright, we can take them down. So it's a little bit more muted. Same thing with the bass, if we don't like that thud, we can start taking that out, or we could add more in. And then the mids we can actually take out as well, which is really interesting with using high gain sort of amplifiers. Now, depending on the type of amplifier, you might find out that it's got an effect or two in the box. Now, with the Yamaha, we've got a couple of different effects and different modulation, different um, delay type, so we could got that, we could add some chorus we could add some flange and we can add some delay and reverb as well and yeah, the last section is the output, which will allow us to amplify the sound coming out. But we've got this connected up a headphone jack running straight into the computer here. But the next stage, I want to actually talk about how we could mic a amplifier like this and get some different tones as well. So I've switched out the amplifier to give a different signal, but we actually have a really nice view of the cone here, which allows me to demonstrate some different ways we can use a microphone to get the sound. So I've got it set up in the first position, which is pointing directly at the center point of the cone, the speaker cone. And what that will do is give us the most brighter sound because a lot of that force is going straight into the microphone. So if we play our test tone, 
Yeah, so that's the uh, really bright, sort of easy way. What we can do is we can also offset that sound. So if I bring it around like that, we're still getting that full direct force, but sort of offset on it. So that gives a sort of different tone. What we can do next, I'm just going to straighten it up. Uh, we point it at the edge of the cone, which gives us a bit of a more muted sort of tone as well. And yeah, um, on larger diaphragms, it's a lot easier position. So we could actually move it further out. Yeah. And yeah, so anywhere between there, we can really shift the sound of this sort of amplifier. So if I had a second one of these, like I do here, we can do some interesting things where we capture two different sound sources off an amplifier, and then we can use that to create a blend between the two to get a different tone. Now, what you want to try and do is make sure that they are the exact same height from the speaker cone as they can be, because if they're offset, you'll create some phasing issues, which uh, you'll pick up when um, certain frequencies will drop off because they'll cancel each other out. So another way you could add to this sound is by capturing the sound of the room itself. Now you could have a microphone like this, placed somewhere on the other side of the room or close by. And then when you start playing the sound on the microphone, this will also be capturing it as well. So when you go into your door, you can mix it all together and you're creating a bit of a sonic imprint of what the workspace was like on the day, which creates a unique sound that you can put into your song. Now we have it all set up, let's see what we can do with it. So I hope you found this useful. Now, if you do have access to a guitar amp like this one, go and give it a shot. It's actually quite fun just to muck around with the different sounds that you can pull out from a synthesizer. And yeah, um, you don't need a big one as well if you're in the market for one, because if you're recording in a room like this, you don't need to have a massive sounding system. All you need is a little speaker that you can actually get the sound from. Now, I picked this up about seven years ago. It was quite cheap. I've covered it in lots and lots of stickers. So yeah, it served me well. And yeah, if you're wanting to give this a shot, go ahead, it's lots of fun. So I hope you found this one interesting. I'm just trying different other things that I do with synthesizers and all that. So if you enjoyed that one, feel free to leave a comment below. Or if you have any other sort of questions about this type of mucking around with sound, I'm more than happy to have a chat. And yeah, um, we'll see what next week it has and I'll see you next time.